Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Will you please stand? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water in your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower on us, shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, with the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is Come Gracious Spirit, Heavenly Dove. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are, th <clears throat> are not these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days will I pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. How manifold are your words, all works, O Lord. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number. Living things, both small and great. <coughs> there go the ships, to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, and give them their food in due season. Give it to them, they gather it. You open your hands, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O oh Lord, rejoice in all your works. Send forth your at the earth and it trembles you touch the mountains and they smoke I will sing to the Lord as long as I live I will praise my God while I have my being may these words of mine please you I will rejoice in the Lord Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am with the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my behalf, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not then believe me because of the works themselves, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will be great, will do greater works than these, because I am one of the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Now, as you look around this morning, you see red everywhere. You see red flowers. There's red cloth on a lot of things. A lot of people are wearing red. And you may think, golly, what if that means anything? Well, yes, it does. Today's a special day for the church. It's the day of Pentecost. It's another special church holiday. And I know what you're thinking. Now, what does that mean? What is Pentecost? Well, to tell you the truth, I have difficulty remembering what all the church holidays are myself. It took me years to remember what Epiphany was. But let's see if we can help you remember what Pentecost is. I'll start by talking about Amazon. I order something from Amazon. Let's say I order razor blades from Amazon. Well, I get a notice right away that says, your order has been confirmed. Then a little bit later, I get a, another message that says, your order has shipped. And then I get another message, maybe a day later, maybe a couple days later, your order is 10 stops away. Then your order is four stops away. And finally, there it is. Your order has been delivered. It keeps me up to date all the time. Well, God had told his people that he would send a spirit to them at some time. He didn't tell them when. And well, they didn't have Amazon. They didn't have cell phones. And so there was probably two people sitting there thinking, Lord sent that Holy Spirit yet? The other person says, I don't know. What's it supposed to look like? What's it supposed to feel like? So God had to do something to let the people know that the Holy Spirit was there. So on the day of Pentecost, he did a few things. One, he sent a big wind down from heaven, and you could hear it. It was whooshing. And then he sent little flames of fire that sat on people's shoulders didn't hurt them, just sort of looked like they had little flames on them. And then he let them 
speak and everyone could understand what they were saying, no matter if they spoke that language or not. So God had to use special signs to let the, know, let the people know that the Holy Spirit was there. And it remains with us. It's, it's like Amazon. Amazon only delivered my razor blades once until I reorder. But God's not going to send the Holy Spirit again and again because he's already given it. It's already with us. It's already within all of us. <coughs> so that's what all the red is for. It's to commemorate the day that God sent that Holy Spirit to us so that his spirit could be with us at all times. Let's have a brief prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, that it may dwell in us always, that we may use it for your good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Is it on? Good morning, everybody. This is the St. John's Scholarship Committee. My committee is Pat Murphy, Jerry Olson, Andrew Banks, uh, Brenda Morrison is not here, and myself. Um, right now, we'll ask for Jordan, Kelso, and Danica Props to come forward, please. Go ahead, turn around. We'd like to present the two recipients of the 2022 scholarship. Um, I read their applications and I want to tell you that they were so impressive that I told my committee um, both of them deserve this scholarship. Normally we give you one, but I said there's no way. We have to give them to both and my committee 100% agreed with me. And so we're just so happy to present Jordan and Danica. Jordan, Danica, and would you like to tell everybody um, what your plans are? Um, next year I'm going to WVU to um, study exercise physiology and minor in dance. I'm going to West Virginia Wesleyan and I'm studying communication and pre-law. We're so proud of both of you. Thank you. your 
knowledge of a Bible verse because I do not speak without my Bible verse. So I'm going to start it and see if you can finish it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Okay, this is not my first time sitting in the congregation. I've been here a couple Sundays. It's my first time up here, though, and you got more in you than that. So, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Well, welcome to the 50th day after Easter, 40 days after the resurrection, 10 days after the ascension, Whit Sunday, if you're in the UK, Red Sunday, if you're a Lutheran, the birth of our church. And today we celebrate the birthday of our church, Pentecost. The word Pentecost was taken from Pentecost Day, which means 50th. So welcome. In the gospel today, Jesus is once again preparing the disciples for his leaving. He's trying to explain that he and the Father are one, the same. The same love for all. Today he's telling them and promising them that another will be coming after he is gone. An advocate the Holy Spirit. Now yesterday, <clears throat> a couple of us here went to Senate Assembly and the bishop preached on the word advocate. If you look it up in the dictionary, it means lawyer. And he said, where well, most people think it's a lawyer for us, it's not. The advocate is a lawyer for God to help us know that whatever God says is right. And the Holy Spirit is here to teach us that God is always right. So he's going to send the Holy Spirit. When I was young, as most of you, it was not termed the Holy Spirit. It was always the Holy Ghost. And if you were like me growing up, I wondered about Casper. I wondered what this Holy Ghost was like. I am glad they changed it to Holy Spirit. But Jesus is telling them that this Holy Spirit will teach them, enlighten them, and aid them in their mission, and who will be with them forever. The Holy Spirit's mentioned in the psalm today and in the second reading. And in Acts... Boy, when this Holy Spirit comes, wow, wind, fire, speaking in tongues so that anyone that was present there for that gathering from all those different countries that Ed was so good in reading, they could all understand what was being said. Total amazement. Amazement that what Jesus had promised was happening. The Holy Spirit was descending. Today we celebrate that amazement. We celebrate the Holy Spirit who came then and continues to come and live within each one of us. He came to each one of us at our baptisms. I love the poster over here. I love that poster. And as we are gathered as a group, he is present in this church and in our church as a whole. We celebrate that guarantee that the Holy Spirit living within us will always stay and never leave. We may not have had the fanfare when we were baptized. I doubt if any wind really blew unless your baptism was outside. I doubt if there was fire like at the first Pentecost. But the Holy Spirit entered us with the fire. And he has that fire within us and changes us, transforms us from a me person to a holy person. So how do we know that the Holy Spirit is dwelling within us? 
What is he or she doing for us right now? How does the Holy Spirit make us feel? We're told that we have gifts of the Holy Spirit. And there's tests that you can take to show these gifts. How many of you have taken that test? Some. So I'll be preaching to a couple in the choir there. So today is the day to reaffirm our spiritual gifts. So I'm going to go over some of these gifts. I want you to think if you have that. One summer, Pastor Christine taught all about the spiritual gifts. And then she gave the congregation a list of everybody in the congregation and gave them a list of the spiritual gifts. And we had to write those gifts besides people's names. And I can still look at that person and say, oh, yes, they've got that gift. Or, oh, yes, they've got that gift. So some people have the gift of prophecy. They can convey messages from God. Some have the gift of teaching, communicating information. Some the gift of wisdom, receiving spiritual insights. Some have the gift of discerning spirits. Is it true or is it not true? Or what would Jesus do? Some have the gift of exhortation, where they're so good with words of comfort, consolation, or encouragement. Two of them that most people have is the gift of giving or generosity, helping, assisting others. Mercy, compassion, empathy for others. Hospitality, welcome. They're welcoming, friendly, good cooks usually. That's your greeter and your usher here today. The gift of faith, where they have a faith that's much, much deeper than the average person. The gift of leadership or administration. Some, <clears throat> some people even have the gift of healing. Now, doctors, Nurses, they have that gift, but some people can even just lay their hands on you, and through God, they are healed. I've had that done to me three different times. Some speak in tongues. That's for the individual. And for people to understand, you have to, somebody has to have the gift of interpretation. Believe it or not, some people have the gift of evangelism. They do like to go out and knock on doors. There's the gift of artistry, music, vocal, instrumental, art. There's the gift of pastoring or shepherding. Skilled crafts. Some people are gifted with computers, electrical, mechanical. Some are gifted with writing, like authors. And the last one, some are gifted just with praying. You know, we all pray, but you probably know someone that when they pray, it seems like it's going straight to God. It seems like it's right there. Now, two of my gifts that were tied was generosity and helping. And I head up the stuff closet, the sheets, towels, utensils for families that all the Lutheran churches do in our area, and this church has supported it greatly. When I make that delivery, I get more satisfaction out of me giving it and telling them who it's from. But it seems like I just get this great, great feeling. But not all gifts are positive for the person. Because my next gift that I have is mercy. And it's heartbreaking. Because it makes the people feel so much deeper than most people do. We feel everybody's pain that we know about. I can even cry over roadkill. We feel our own pain much deeper, which means that we have to really watch because people will think we're having a pity party. So we really have to watch what we do. So those are some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I haven't told you what the Holy Spirit does for us besides those gifts. So when I talk, a lot of times I use letters. And being the teacher, I have a poster to share. 
I want to step down here. Our altar, you step down. <laughs> Free, I'm going to trip there. So here we have the Holy Spirit. Holy on one side, Spirit on the other. The H for Holy Spirit is he or she, I'm going to refer to as he, helps to make us holy. I'll talk about that. The O is for omnipresent. The Holy Spirit is everywhere, just like God and Jesus. The L, the Holy Spirit's full of love. The Y, the Holy Spirit helps us to yield to God's will. So we have the letters for spirit. We have the S. The Holy Spirit's also called the sanctifier. Sanctification is the process of anything that we do ourselves that we try to be more holy, anything that we do that make us more like Jesus. And it's the Holy Spirit that steers or leads us to do these things. It may be prayer. It may just be reading the Bible. It may be devotions, Bible studies. The Holy Spirit led you to church today. It's any activity that makes you feel closer to God. So the P, the Holy Spirit is a prayer for us. Have you ever been in the situation that you're just in so much pain or so much grief or so much suffering that you just can't pray yourself. And that's okay. Because the Holy Spirit takes over. He feels our pity. Or he has pity upon us. And he has mercy on us. He feels our pain. And then he helps us to yield and accept whatever the answer is to the prayer. The first I, the Holy Spirit instructs us. He helps us in de making decisions. He's our instinctive feelings, our gut feelings. Should I or shouldn't I? The Holy Spirit's our conscience, helping us to tell right from wrong. Helps us to choose the correct godly path. The R. The Holy Spirit is there to realign us, to rectify us. Helps us to repent. Helps us to return to God when we've strayed or erred or turned away from God. No one here today is perfect. We all make mistakes. The Holy Spirit leads us back to Christ our Redeemer and helps make us right again and again and again with God. The second eye, the Holy Spirit with that fire in us that we got at baptism incites us, inspires us, invites us drives us, urges, encourages us, gives us energy. He helps us use our spiritual gifts. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 13. The Holy Spirit helps us put our love of God into action to do the works that Jesus did to love one another. And the T, the Holy Spirit leads us to the truth teaches the truth. Today you heard Acts 2, 21. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The truth. The Holy Spirit lives within each one of us and has promised never to leave us. He's here today in our hearts now and here in the church and in all churches as a whole as we're gathered the Holy Spirit has made us free to be ourselves with no worries about our salvation. Free to love, free to dream, free to hope. So how do we respond individually or as a church to these wonderful gifts of the Holy Spirit? Out of our love for God, we seek ways to use these spiritual gifts, doing things on our own or as a group to bring new life and joy to others. 
A few of St. John's ministries that I know about are Friends Feeding Friends. You do Tide Blankets, Prayer Shawl Ministries, Adopting a Family at Christmas. And one time when I visited, you had a can back there that was for Ukraine, working as a group. You probably have many, many more. The Holy Spirit leads us to pray, leads us to love, and we act because of the Holy Spirit. But all of us do need a big dose of the Holy Spirit every day. And just like the disciples who lost their shepherd, we beg, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit for our hearts at this time are troubled with all that's happening in your creation. We so need that peace that you gave the disciples. So my prayer is, come Holy Spirit, come, amen.
free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, the people in need, and all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, burst open our locked doors, and by your spirit drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. God in your mercy. Yeah. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God in your mercy. Yeah. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering, especially those that we name in our hearts or allowed at this time. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel, as you did for Boniface, who we commemorate today. Foster our relationships and partner synods and local ministry partners. That our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy. Yeah. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And you're welcome to share the peace whichever way you'd like to do, just so you're safe.
together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Let's try it. Okay, there we go. We have a few announcements today. Um, most everything is in your uh, handout that you were given today. Please note that on the back is the June calendar. There's one minor exception that wasn't included in the June calendar. There is a new group meeting in Luther Hall on the first Monday of the month, unless it's a holiday. Uh, it's called the Eastern Panhandle Youth Alliance. Uh, it's a group of young people who are gathered together for support, and their parents come with them. It's a, it's a really neat group of kids. Uh, confirmation classes are June 12th, correct? And, um, and that's the same day as we have Journey Together. Um, Priscilla has some really some news for from the uh, fall committee. As you can see, I'm doing pretty well six weeks tomorrow. Woo! <laughs> um, uh, the call committee. We met and we are working on a salary package, uh, ben including benefits and so on. Uh, I will be going before council this week and uh, maybe mentioning a name, probably mentioning a name. So that will be up to council, and the council gets to approve of the salary package. So once that's in place, as well as whomever our candidate is. So we're not there yet, but we're really, really close. So um, please continue to keep us in your prayers, and the candidates, whoever it might be, as well as letting the Spirit lead our congregation as the Spirit has. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in your handouts today, there was a form. Please fill this out, your favorite hymn. We are looking to, to do a Hymn Sing Sunday in the near future. Um, and it doesn't have to be something that's in our hymnal. Um, with our CCLI license, we, are, we have the capability of reaching out into other hymnals. If you have something else that you find that's your most favorite hymn of all time. Uh, let's see. There is a council meeting tomorrow night. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a special one. We will, it's, unfortunately, it has to be a closed door, but we will meet and tomorrow night and we will share the information once we are able to do that. Um, Again, we are looking for folks to help with worship. Um, we, need a, we need more than one crucifer. <laughs> Anybody. But you could be. Salad. Huh? But we appreciate Oh, wait. We love Sally. Man. She can do it. Oh, my. It just makes the service so much better. But anybody. 
If anybody is, and it's, it's, it's not difficult, and we will teach you how to carry the cross in, and we will teach you the right way to light the candles, get with Mike Noel. He would love to get your name. Anything else from the floor? Oh, I have something to report about the about Synod Assembly, but go ahead. Anything from the, oh, I think Jerry has something, and then Pat has something as well. I'm not volunteering to carry the cross. <laughs> uh, several weeks ago, we held the Doug Widmeyer Memorial Chair to Golf Classic. It was to benefit the Habitat for Humanity. Uh, it was a very successful event. I'd like to thank St. John's for their support and the congregation. It was a wonderful opportunity to honor the memory of a great guy, a uh, longtime community uh, advocate, and also a longtime, longtime member of St. John's Church. Thank you, St. John's, for your help. We were able to raise $15,000 for Habitat for Humanity. It is our first annual event, so we're going to do it again next year. I hope you'll be there to support us. Thank you. Pat? And on that same subject, um, we had a proposal from Bartlett Tree Experts to take care of some fallen trees in the cemetery. Um, we maintain that cemetery with the um, um, un uh, United Church of Christ. My brain went south for a moment. Christ Reformed, but they are United Church of Christ. Um, they uh, have to approve any finances that are spent. They have the package, and they will be meeting Tuesday, so we will know after Tuesday what's going on, that we can get those trees that have fallen over taken care of. Um, yesterday at Synod Assembly, we were tasked with a special project, something that, they, that we were, it's a homework assignment, so to speak. We were each given a green business card, and we were tasked to find someone in our congregation or somewhere that had, as we saw, the gift of ministry. Someone who we think would be an excellent pastor to suggest that they go to seminary. And um, there is a lot of scholarship money available from the seminary. Um, if, you, if you're interested and you have the calling yourself, that's a place to go because we, we are so short of pastors right now. I think, uh, the, what was it they said, 17 in our synod alone? 16, 16 churches, 16 uh, parishes. And some of those parishes are multi-point parishes where one pastor has three or four churches that they minister to every week. So that's a lot of churches in our synod without pastors looking. And there just aren't enough to go around. So us finding a pastor right now is a miracle. And I'm, I, what we've gotten to this point, I, we, I don't know where we are. But we'll find out when uh, Priscilla makes the presentation this week. Um, and there were several other things. More things will be coming out from Bishop when the, uh, uh, the, the, the transcript of that comes out. I will make sure that that gets forwarded out to everyone. But thank you so much.